Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today Rivian has just released the design studio for the R1S all-electric SUV and the R1T all-electric pickup truck. This doesn't actually go live to the general public until November 23rd, next Monday. So I did place a pre-order so that we can kind of all walk through this together and see what the design studio looks like for Rivian. Um, we are going to have a normal episode of Tesla Daily later today, but I did just want to go through this for those of you that are curious. So they send an email to pre-order holders. They just say, you're now ready to start configuration with a let's go link. So that opens up right into the design studio, lets you um, go in and configure your vehicle, shows your pre-order date, lets you cancel or change from the R1T, which we'll go through first, to the R1S. Uh, so let's just get right into it, into the configuration studio here. So right away, you'll notice this is pretty similar to how Tesla has their design studio set up. Uh, we'll go through sort of like the three, four different panels here. Uh, and it'll show sort of the specs as we go through and how those change. But right away, you can just see a few shots of the vehicle. So it is nice. Tesla kind of only gives you that one uh, view. Obviously, they've got a ton of photos and stuff that you can look at. But Rivian does here present a couple of different um, views of the exterior. Then you can see the interior here. Personally, I really like what they are doing with the interior. You've got two screens. Uh, you've got your center screen, which looks to be a little bit bigger than what Tesla has. Uh, certainly seems to be a wider aspect ratio. Personally, what I really like with the design here is the black wood trim. Um, that's something that I think Tesla could benefit by integrating. Uh, they have sort of a stark contrast with the lighter brown wood that they've got in the Model 3 these days. And I think something like this will look great in their vehicle. Um, but here you can see just a couple of shots of the interior um, and how that's all set up. So on the right hand side, we start our configuration. You can choose um, the launch edition so that is the first available edition, that's June 2021, starting at $75,000. They give you a little bit more detail there um, in terms of what all the features are. So obviously the big one to look at here is the battery pack. So this will be the 300 plus mile large pack standard. Uh, so they are, belie I believe they're gonna have a smaller pack and eventually a larger pack, but those won't start delivery until later. And I was hoping we'd get to see the actual confirmed range, but they're still just sticking with the, the 300 plus mile. Um, range there. So there's sort of all the options summarized, uh, but you could see the adventure package that starts in January of 2022. They say that's maximum capability paired with a premium interior designed for adventure. So I think if we select that, it doesn't look like anything changes here, uh, but there's also, also the explore package, which comes in a little bit cheaper than either the launch edition or the adventure package. So if we click on that, then you can start to see some things do change with the interior. It looks like you get a different headliner, probably a little bit cheaper material. Um, and then the seats do change a little bit. doesn't look too different to me. Um, but yeah. All right, so then you can see the battery. So you've got the large pack, 300 plus miles, and the max pack at 400 plus miles. So that's an additional 10 grand, uh, which does seem like a pretty good value. Later on, we'll go and compare this to sort of what the Cybertruck options uh, look like. But that's really rounds out the first screen there. So let's just go back here and we can see the difference between the Explore package. Looks like again, instead of that wood trim, you're getting um, more of probably some type of composite material there. I really like the, the Adventure package design here. Let's see if there's any other just sort of minor details. Yeah, you can see some of the accents change, the pedals change, and the trim. All right, so let's move on and look at the exterior options. All right, let's actually go back to the launch edition here. So that's got all the colors. So this is what Rivian is calling the launch green. So that's exclusive to launch, but it is included. And then the other two base colors are this LA silver and glacier white. I think both look really nice. Um, and then in the premium colors, you've got a total of 10 different options here, um, seven premium. So you've got Red Canyon for $1,500, Midnight, which looks like a really dark gray, maybe black, probably black for 1500. Rivian Blue, so this is the most premium, uh, as well as Compass Yellow, those both come in at 2500. Then you've got a Limestone, which is a nice darker gray, silver color. Forest Green, Granite, and then again Compass Yellow. So a really nice spread of colors there. Obviously Tesla only has five. Um, We'll see what, what happens to change with Giga Berlin when Tesla has a new paint shop up and running there. Sounds like they do want to do a little bit more in terms of paint optionality. Uh, but I, I really like the selection here from Rivian. Looks really good. 
All right, so then they have something called driving here. This is the off-road upgrade. That's just included with the uh, launch edition. So that says it features reinforced underbody shield, dual and front bumper tow hooks, which you can see there, um, and an air compressor, which would be powered by the battery pack in the vehicle, which is pretty cool. Something I believe the Cybertruck will have, but I'm not 100% certain on that. So then you have wheel and tire options, three different options here, a 20 inch all-terrain, which is standard, 21 inch road, and then 22 inch sport. And it does look like these all are just included, at least in the launch edition. So it's really just a matter of your preferences. But they all look to have, this probably, the road looks to be the most aerodynamic, sport a little bit less so, and then all-terrain, not as focused on the aero, which I think makes sense. So here's something that's pretty cool. I'm not sure if Rivian had talked about this in the past, but they have this exploring option. So they call it a camp kitchen, and you can see that it sort of plugs in um, on the side of the vehicle. I'm not sure if that would be where on the vehicle exactly that is. It's a little bit difficult to tell. Um, but anyway, so the camp kitchen is, they say, the magic of outdoor cooking with all the essentials from home. Our camp kitchen helps you prepare complete meals wherever you are easily and comfortably with a view. So this is, uh, it has an induction cooktop, a built-in sink, which it's a little bit hard to see in the photo. I'm not sure exactly where that is. A uh, four gallon water tank and pump, an optional 30 piece prep and cookware set from Snow Peak. So that's a $5,000 option. Um, pretty cool. I'm sure there aren't a lot of aftermarket products that are available that have anything like that. So probably a good business opportunity for people that want to undercut that $5,000 price. I'm sure that's a pretty good margin there for Rivian, but having that built in, you know, cooktop, built in sink, water tank, that's a pretty cool option to be able to add right here in the design studio. All right. So then we move on to the interior. We looked at this a little bit, but so you can see here, there's two standard options or non-premium options. So there's black mountain, which we talked a bit about before, and then there's ocean coast. So you can see that changes the headliner, it changes the wood trim. One thing that I think is really cool here is it actually changes the, the I'm not sure if it's leather, vegan leather. Uh, it changes that vegan leather on the steering wheel as well as throughout the entire interior. Um, so with the black, you're seeing the black steering wheel with Ocean Coast here, you're seeing that more beige, lighter color steering wheel as well with obviously the lighter wood. And then forest edge, so you're getting that darker green, sort of an army green interior here. Um, definitely feels very, very army to me. But again, you see the steering wheel change, which is just a nice little detail, I think. So that's an additional $2,000. Um, and then they do talk about the compass yellow accents throughout, which you can notice here, and I'm sure in other areas as well. A little bit up there as well. And that seems to be pretty consistent. So honestly, I think all of these look really great. I'm not a huge fan of these floor mats. I'm not sure exactly what material that is um doesn't look the best to me but otherwise i think yeah everything looks really good so that's kind of it it then takes you to the summary sheet um you can save your preferences there's no additional uh amount due today so they say order specs and pricing may change as we approach production so they are you know leaving themselves the ability there to adjust but yeah, you can see, so the estimated price on this configuration with the premium paint, uh, the $2,000 forest green interior, or no, we, we stuck with the black interior. So it's pretty much top, topping out. If we did have that additional um, forest green, whatever they called it, uh, interior, then we'd be at 84.5. And then as we talked about earlier, they do have that additional uh, $10,000 larger 400 plus mile range pack. So then we'd be getting up into around, you know, $95,000 uh, at peak. All right, so that was the R1T. I think that's kind of it there. Uh, but let's go back here and let's see if we can't just change over to the R1S. All right, so change model and we'll take a look at the R1S. So we'll go a little bit quicker through this one. It's gonna be pretty similar. So you can see beginning deliveries August 2021, so a month or two later than the R1T. Uh, and then for the adventure package and the explore package, you know, similar things there, but those will also begin January 2022. So same as the R1T on those options. Uh, so this one, the R1S, the SUV is also projected to have a 300 plus mile range, but you can see they don't have that option here for the additional 
400 plus mile range uh, with the R1S as of yet. So there you can see again, three shots of the exterior, interior setup. I think these are honestly the exact same photos, uh, but obviously you get the, the third row then in the back uh, with the R1S that you would not have with the R1T. So there's the adventure package. There's the explore package again. Looks like you've got pretty big glass paneling here. Not sure how far forward that extends, but you've got a giant one here that goes back to behind the heads, looks like, of the second passenger, second row, and then another big open glass panel for the third row as well. It looks like a really spacious vehicle uh, from these shots here. All right, so we'll go into the exterior. Again, you can see, well, let's go back to the launch edition so we can see that. You've got all the color choices here again, same price spread. So anywhere between zero and $1,500 or $2,500 for the paint. Honestly, this is pretty close to my favorite color. So <laughs> I don't know that I would pick it, but I really do like it. And you've got your Black Mountain. Again, these are just the same shots as uh, on the R1T. And then you've got your summary. So again, we're coming in some somewhere in the 80,000 range. Uh, the cheapest you can probably get it configured is that 77.5 if you don't have any options. It looks like they're not offering that camp um, package, the exploring package with the additional, uh, the sink and the induction cooktop. It looks like that's not an option here for the R1S, kind of interestingly. Uh, but again, you do have three different wheel options. So I believe this all-terrain one, I think that's different than what we saw in the R1T. These look the same, and those look the same. So I think we're just seeing a difference there on the on the 20 inch. But again, those are all included. Yeah, so we're at 80,000 there with the paint. If we go back to the launch green, or even the white, then you're looking right at 77.5. And of course, Rivian will be eligible, at least in the United States, for the $7,500 tax credit. Uh, for the first couple hundred thousand vehicles sold. So that'll get this, you know, 300 plus mile range, pretty large SUV down to about $70,000, which I think, I think Rivian's going to find um, quite a bit of success at that price point. So if we just lastly just flip over here and compare it to the Cybertruck, obviously these are different, completely different vehicles, um, though would offer a lot of the same utility. Uh, but, you know, we're seeing the Cybertruck come in with a much cheaper price uh, with the single motor, 250 plus mile range at 39.9, though obviously Tesla's worked through the tax credit. We'll see if that changes with the uh, upcoming administration changes. Then you have the dual motor. So this would be probably the most comparable to the R1T at this point in time, 300 plus miles. Uh, I'm not sure what the zero to 60 is on the R1T. I don't think they gave us any information on that. So we're just gonna have to wait and see on that. Um, but you're seeing again, the $50,000 price point here versus the $75,000 price point which, you know, you could get a bit lower with this Explorer edition, and then eventually I believe they'll have a smaller pack. But, you know, that's 70,000, I think that was, you know, 67.5 maybe for the R1T. So it's going to be tough to compete with, with price, but again, not everybody is going to want this sort of a silhouette on their vehicle for the Cybertruck. And then you bring in the tri-motor, and, you know, that's it's really a, a very different comparison. 300 plus miles versus 500 plus miles. You've got the zero to 60 less than 2.9 seconds here on the Cybertruck. Uh, so it's going to be tough to compete, but I think for the market that doesn't want a vehicle that looks like the Cybertruck, it's going to be compelling. And I think for the R1S in particular, there's not really a good comparison for this. You could say the Model X, but again, that's a very different shape of vehicle. Um, and I think if we look at the interior here, you're seeing a, probably a lot more space in that third row than what you would see um there it is then what you would see for the for the model x but obviously we'll have to wait until we can some people can get inside of these vehicles oh so i didn't i don't think i saw this interior so the ocean coast i think that looks pretty good uh for the r1s there and then there's that five seat option so just taking that out with i'm assuming gives you quite a lot of room back there uh, but again for the same price so it's kind of nice to have have that ability and not have to pay an upcharge for that. 
Uh, so I think that Ocean Coast interior looks really good. But yeah, so we'll be back later today with a, another normal episode of Tesla Daily, but I did just want to run through that configurator for anyone that doesn't have a pre-order but is still curious as to what was in there. So hopefully that uh, covered it extensively. Thanks for listening, and I will see you next time. Bye.